Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Watson Michael from Ceylon Institute of English and Leadership. At this time, we have an interesting guest with from the US, Lobel Casiro, a seasoned executive, professional life coach, and mentor, weaves together compelling narratives of female leaders who made their mark backed by personal life lessons that underscore the strengths of women bring to the boardroom. Also, she is the CEO of FLC Business Consulting and Senior Vice President of Commercial Strategy at PM Hotel Group. Lowell, welcome and how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Watson. Thank you for having me on your awesome podcast. This is great. I love your work. Thank you very much and it's an absolute honor to have you. Great. So, yeah. So, well, uh, can you tell us why you named the book Lead Like a Girl, A Leader's Journey from Aspirations to Achievements? So, Watson, I have been so blessed in my career and um, started in, in, the, in the lowest position that you can start mm -hmm. in a hotel sales department. I was okay. a... Back in those days, they referred to us as a secretary, um, oh, wow. not even an admin. We were secretaries, but um, the industry, the hotel industry was very good to me. And I was able to make it to the boardroom and I wow. was able to make it to a corporate level and be the uh, at the top of, of my discipline within the hospitality industry. And somewhere along my journey, I started realizing that leadership is really about giving back. And mm. what I really wanted to do was tell others, whether it's male or female, that if you aspire to reach your goals in your career, that it can be done. And it really is just my story. And I tend to approach things like fighting like a girl. So I thought lead like a girl sounded really good. And mm. the journey course, is my own journey of aspirations to achievements from the, you know, kind of the, the, the admin position in a hotel sales office to a responsibility of 75 hotels with a third party management company. So it's just my story. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how I felt like it would be conveyed well um, with that title. Wow. Okay. Amazing. Right. So, uh, can you tell us what is so special about this book? So, <clears throat> so in an interview I had um, previously about the book, um, mm -hmm. someone asked me what was my biggest surprise about yeah. it. When, and so when I was writing the book, I started out, isn't it interesting how nothing ever really ends up like you thought it would because when I first started this project, mm. I really had a thought that I would just write a book on leadership. Mm. And it would be my way of kind of giving back to the up and coming leaders within my industry and other industries because the leadership principles are very, uh, they cross over into other industries as well. and. Okay. So my biggest surprise and probably what is so special, I think what is so special about this book is what I learned was I couldn't mm. write the leadership lessons without writing the life lessons because the life lessons is what created the leadership qualities that mm. I have. So what I didn't expect to do was get like, really up close and personal with some of my personal triumphs, some of my personal uh, challenges and mistakes and failures. We learn mm. from our failures, right? But yeah. I just ended up telling a lot more about my, my really my own personal journey through life that yeah. created the leader I became. And I, I guess I didn't expect to do that, but I think it made it very special and very personal. Wow, amazing, right? Okay, now uh, women empowerment 
it is 100% essential in this world. I agree. Okay. So as a female leader, can you emphasize more on that? Well, I think there's a lot of industries that um, women start out having a good percentage of, and I'm, I'm going to use since, since the industry I've spent most of my career in mm. is the hospitality industry. So okay. I, right before I wrote the, the book, I realized I, I attended um, a coaching session for myself. I was, I actually went to a coaching session and they talked a lot about how you could go from being a director or a vice president to the, to the C-suite. Wow. And that was a lot of the training that they were talking about. And they also talked about statistics. Mm. And so in the hospitality industry, if you start as a director, you are typically 57% female, but you, you um, typically have 57% female, and so it's a good good percentage. It's it's just mm -hmm. a, almost half and half. We we tend to have a higher percentage at the director level. As you yeah. can to see the people move up in the hotel industry, the statistics at that time, and they have they have gotten better recently. But the statistics at that time said that once you get to the C suite, that you're only like eight percent of mm. when I get to the C-suite in this industry. And I had always noticed, like, I would be at conferences and it, there would be a lot of suits and very few women, right? And yeah. so I just feel like it really doesn't matter if you're male or you're female. We definitely have different attributes for sure. And there's a chapter in Lead Like a Girl where it talks about the female attributes and the male attributes but what i say is on any given day you may have to bring any of those attributes meeting mm. people it's not a one size fits all and mm. so on and, and quite frankly i do group coaching on the principles of lead like a girl mm. and the coaching that um i do we actually take a test when we get to that chapter on like, for example, if you took the test, you would rate yourself on the leadership, uh, the attributes of a female leader and the attributes of a male leader. And you'll be mm -hmm. surprised how yeah. you might rate high on some of the female attributes that you didn't expect to do. I actually rate very high on confidence and decision mm -hmm. making, and they tend to be more of a, of a male leader attribute. But female leaders are good at communication and um, empathy. So on any given day, you may need one of those, all of those. And you may be leading a group of people who require different leadership styles. So the important thing is that you have a really good tool, toolbox of attributes and you bring them to the table every day so you can resource them as you need them. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, you may have to pull pull them out at any time that makes sense 100 percent, right and well articulated okay great right. yeah so can you elaborate about a special chapter in your, your book well i love a lot of them because as i said they got very personal so a lot of them um I, I enjoy, and there's one in particular, uh, it's the last chapter, and I'm not gonna talk about that one today, but I will say that we, we were speaking right before we started this, and yeah. we're both faith-based, faith which I actually loved the, the little prayer that you did before we started. That was so sweet. Yeah. It made me just so happy to know you. And, um, but I come from four generations of ministry, and so wow. the very, the very last chapter of the book is is really based on a sermon that my granddaddy used to preach. Mm. And the sermon was Christians on Watch. And the the I changed it to Leaders on Watch. And you'll mm. have to buy the book to read that one because when you ask me if there's one I want to elaborate on, I um was was coming up on a milestone birthday when I okay. started 
like it. And I wrote a letter to my younger self. Okay. Said things like, you know, don't sweat the small stuff and, or, you know, don't overthink it and things like that. It was a pretty short letter. And when I got ready to use that letter to my younger self in the book, it really didn't, it wasn't enough to make a chapter. So I thought, hmm, what am I going to do about that? Because I really want to put that in there. And I really had felt like it would be a good message to young up and coming leaders. So I ended up writing uh, the decades that built me. And wow. I started my twenties and went twenties, thirties, forties. And we'll, we'll just, you'll have to read the book to know how old I am now. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, and my 30th decade was one of the most challenge and my third decade was one of the most challenging decades of my life. It was a very trying time for our family. I was called upon to help run my dad's organization. And mm. it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to face from a career perspective. But what I real the way that I did that, I tied it back to all those lessons, you know, as I said, like the life yeah. lessons, what created the leader. And what I learned in that third decade of my life was the importance of resilience, mm. persistence, and a yeah. relentless pursuit to your vision and to your goals. And the story behind all of that, which we don't have time for all of that tonight, but it was just a really great reflection on all the things I had gone through getting to where I am now. Mm. And, and the lessons that they taught me that allowed me to be a better leader. And, and one thing that I always, I read a quote today um, that I think it was Simon Sinek, but it talks about when you, when you get to a certain point in your career, it's, yeah. not about, it's not about doing a job. It's about a responsibility for other people. And that's what, what I always say is that in order to be a leader, you need, every leader needs one thing and without it, you cannot lead. And you know what that is? You need people that want to follow you. Mm. Because without followers, you're not leading. And Good. unless you are authentic and people can trust you and believe in you and you have their best interest at heart, they, they won't follow you. And that's mm. what I had to realize, you know, it used to be about, give me the title, show me, show me the money. I'm climbing this corporate ladder. And one day I realized it's a huge responsibility to lead people because now you're not only responsible for them and their livelihood, but the people they're responsible for. Isn't that, isn't that daunting sometimes? I like to think of that. Very true. Right. Well, it's just like you give a you give a master class in a in about two or three paragraphs just now. <laughs> so it's, it's it's very inspiring. Thank yeah. you. So, so what was one of the most challenging things that you ever faced and how did you overcome it? So <clears throat> I would say that um, probably the most challenging thing that I faced in my career mm -hmm. growth was my own self-imposed, the own limitations that I created for myself. Okay. Because imposter syndrome is a real thing. Mm. And what is on, in your head can be your own worst enemy. Mm. I True. was... I was speaking to someone the other day and I said, have you ever been, have you ever been the victim of your own success? So you get to the position that you wanted. You got the bigger paycheck, you got the title and you've moved out of your cubicle into your own office. And then all of a sudden you realize the responsibility that comes with that new position and the voices in your head start saying, mm -hmm. You're going to fail. 
people, people are looking at you and thinking, you don't know what you're doing. And so if, if you could just realize if you, if you find yourself in that, and if your listeners are in that place and they just got this great new promotion and they're going, oh my God, what did I ask for? Mm. And, but if you could just know that, that, sometimes we are our own worst enemies when it comes to the judgment of ourselves and that yeah. people are there to support you. I think the, the worst thing that you can do is pretend you know what you don't know. And, 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 and sometimes you just have to, I still ask my team, I've been a leader for over 30 years and I still am not ashamed to, uh, to say, I'm asking you this question because I really don't know and I need to understand. And so if you just can realize that we're all lifelong learners mm. and, you make a mistake, and you may fail, I've failed many times, but if you learn from that mistake or that failure, there's value in that. So when you can get, when you can change that mindset of telling yourself you're going to fail instead of telling yourself you're going to fail. You need to say, I'm going to succeed. I may have to get some more training. I may have to do study some trends. I may have to ask some questions, but I am going to succeed. Don't get me started on I am meditations. That's a, we have to do a whole other podcast for that. So I'm very passionate about I am what you say when you speak something, it has already formed in your brain before you speak it and when when that happens and it's forming in your brain you know what else is happening you're believing it mm. it's your belief system very yeah very very true though. right so you're you're articulating you're articulating it very well okay so um the way you're emphasizing it's very easy to understand it okay and when you mentioned about the imposter syndrome, I mean, that's something I think some people uh, suffer from. So uh, there are a lot of things to learn. I'm sure your book, a lot. I'm, 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 I'm quite sure your book is going to help a lot of people. Okay. And uh, yeah. So can you summarize this book in one sentence? I can actually, Watson, I can summarize this book in two words. Wow, okay. Authentic leadership. Wow, there you go. Great. Just be real. Like, you just got to be real. That's, that's, um, my grandmother, when she was, when she was not well, and we knew mm -hmm. that she was going to um, leave us soon. I was sitting okay. and speaking to her one day and I said, uh, what wisdom would you impart to me? Mm. And she wasn't a wealthy woman. She didn't have mm. a big career. In mm. fact, um, she had a very humble uh, lifestyle and, and her claim to fame was that she, when her mother passed away, she brought all of her siblings to live with her as a new newlywed. And she brought them all to live with, with her to keep them from going into foster care. So mm. I knew that a lot of people had passed through her life and she had been the mother to many people. In fact, in, in my life, I'd come back and mm. lived at a, at a point in time in my life as well. And I said to my grandmother, I like I, I always um, refer to her as Miss Ada. And I said, what would you impart to me? What wisdom would you impart to me? There was no inheritance. There was no, yeah. no monetary things to inherit. So I knew that the value was going to come from her wisdom. And she said, mm -hmm. Lavelle, you are not better than anyone and no one's better than you. Just be yourself. And mm. so the, the theme throughout Lead Like a Girl is authenticity. And so two words that I would say about this book it resonates through every chapter, authentic leadership. Mm, authentic leadership. That's a good, uh, that's a good word. Two good words. I love it. Great. So, um, yeah.
So based on your experience, Lohal, um, any final message to all the to all our viewers and listeners who seek motivation from you? You know, I think, um, again, I would just go back to the voices in your head. Just believe in yourself. Mm. There's enough naysayers out there that are going to say you can't, that's not a good idea, or um, even sometimes family will say just, you know, they sometimes they care about you and they don't want to see you get hurt, don't want to see you fail. And the belief that you can succeed starts with you. True. Absolutely. So, well, thank you very much for taking time and doing this valuable podcast with us. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Watson. And I hope one day to get to see your beautiful country. It's now on my bucket list, Sri Lanka. I want to come and see the, the elephant orphanage. So, yeah, it's called Pinabala. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Great. Looking forward to have you in our country. And Lowell, once again, thank you very much. Thank you so much.